Hello and welcome. I'm Johnny, I'm an engineer, and you want a sweet piping animation in your app. It's been quite trendy for a couple of years now, and there are libraries that do most of the work for us, but you know what? Let's have fun building this ourselves. Let's go. So it's this superpower we want to type, and we've extracted that whole section into its own React component. So let's open that. It's this span element where we want to do the magic, so let's start by adding a blinking cursor at the end. I'm thinking we should add it as a pseudo element, so let's give this a class and go to our Tailwind CSS file where we've defined some global classes to use anywhere, and let's define what the after pseudo element for blinking cursor does. It will have the pipe character as content. There are other ways to design this, but this is quick and good looking. Let's give it a contrasting color for more fun. And now let's make it blink by defining an animation. We want to go from its default 100% opacity to 0% opacity and back, so specifying 0% at the middle point will do it. So let's apply this animation to our pseudo element, make it last one second, loop forever, not bad. We can add the step start option to make it actually blink, which is more realistic behavior for a cursor. And we can tweak the direction to make it blink faster or slower, but this looks about right if I compare it to the cursor on my editor. All right, that was quite fun. Let's see about typing out this main superpower. There may be a cleverer way to achieve this with a CSS animation as well, targeting each individual character, but I'm thinking JavaScript for this one. React is supposedly pretty good at adding and removing things on the page, so let's make this method have a body and keep track of our type superpower using the world's most popular hook, useState. Starts as an empty string, and we use it in place of our hard-coded superpower. Blinking cursor looking cute by itself. In order to have something typed, we'll need to use that set typed superpower somewhere. Changing state is a side effect, so let's use effect, give it an empty dependency array so it will only run on the first render, and set a timeout. Empty method for now, let's define our one superpower outside of the component, paste telling stories in there. All right, now let's say that after 1000 milliseconds, one second, we want to set type superpower to the one superpower we got. Great, now that's some fast typing. Before we move on, let's be nice and proper here and do our effect cleanup. Let's return the method we want to run as cleanup before the component amounts, we want to clear the timeout we've set up. If we've navigated to another page, we don't want to attempt to change the state of a component that is no longer rendered. All right, so how do we type letter by letter? Well, how about when we set type superpower, we set it to only a part of the full superpower. Let's slice it from the beginning, index zero, up to the length of the currently typed superpower plus one. All right, starts to work, but never runs again, of course, since we've got an empty dependency array. This will only run once, when the component first renders. But we now also depend on the type superpower, so let's add it to the dependency array and boom, type it. Well, slow type it. We can mess around a bit with the timing. Great. What happens when we've typed the whole word? Well, nothing. Nothing visible, nothing bad. But to be thorough for later, let's make a check. If the next type superpower is already equal to what we've already typed, let's early out. No need to set up a new timeout or anything. Amazing. Now, instead of using the one superpower, let's say we've got an array, an array of two. Always use the first one for now, the one on index zero. Now, I have talked about how we should use more custom hooks, and yes, at this point, this is quite a lot of logic, and I would much rather if this component was running the one custom hook than returning its JSX. So let's first create our custom hook in the same file. Let's create use type superpower. 
and slide up all of the hooks logic in it. Let's return the type superpower and now let's have the component take the superpower by using our custom hook. Great, works the same. Let's make our custom hook take in an array of superpowers to avoid a hidden dependency on this level. Let's have our component pass the superpowers to it. And let's remember that our effect now depends on this argument that can change, so let's add superpowers to the dependency array. Finally, let's extract all of this into its own file. Save the new file, save the refactor, all good. Sweet, now it's a bit easier to focus on making this part work. The next step would be to start deleting our superpower to simulate what would happen if we were to start pressing backspace. And I'm tempted to bring in next state because my mind immediately goes to a state machine to solve this. But we can work in a state machine way without bringing in a whole library. So let's enumerate our states. What we've been doing was the typing state, we'll want a deleting state, and in between we'll have an idle idling, posing state. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, one more state to track. Let's use state to... Oh, uh, this will get confusing. To avoid confusion, let's call these phases. At any one time, we're either in a typing, posing, deleting phase. And let's use state to get and set the phase. Start with typing. And now let's early out if we're in the posing phase. This means our effect depends on phase. Let's add it to the dependency array. And let's say that if the next type superpower is the same as the type superpower, so we said this is when we're done typing, instead of an early out here, let's set the phase to posing. And let's set a new timeout to move on to the deleting phase after... A thousand ms? Let's... Take a moment to switch to constants for these timings, so we can play around with them later. At this point, we'll be doing three different things in three different phases, so perfect time to refactor into a switch. The posing case is indeed gonna be the same as our default case, but for our typing phase, let's slide up all of this. Let's block scope it with the curlies because we'll be using timeouts for each one. All right, our deleting phase should be similar to our typing case, so let's copy that in there. Change this case to be deleting. Let's name this next remaining to make it a bit more obvious. We'll be deleting stuff. And of course, instead of adding, we'll be subtracting one character. When do we want to do something different in this case? I guess when the type superpower is falsy, when it's the empty string, we're done deleting. So we want to set the phase back to typing. Let's do this check first, so we'll only subtract the character if we don't make it in the if. Oh, and let's use this variable we extracted but forgot to reuse. But this still won't work because this timeout we've put at the end of the typing phase gets cleared immediately because the phase changes. And then we get to the posing phase, which does nothing. So let's move the transition to the deleting phase in here. Woohoo! We made it to a fun loop. We type, pose, delete, and start typing again, just fine. But it's always the same word. And that's because we're always using the first superpower, the one that's on index zero. We can make this dynamic if we keep track of the index. So let's use state again. Let's get and set the selected index. Start at index zero, the first superpower. 
use this dynamic index extent of zero everywhere, we now depend on it. All we need is to change the index somewhere. And it's when we've completely deleted the superpower when we want to move on to the next one. So let's get into our deleting case when the typed superpower is falsy, set the index to one. Great, it's gonna work. To make this dynamic, the next index is gonna be the selected index plus one. And if there actually is a superpower on that index, we're gonna use it, or else we go back to index zero, the start of the array. Amazing, this works a dream, we're done. Let's add one more superpower to celebrate. Woohoo! Now, this effect is cool, but it may be annoying for accessibility reasons to have the content change so rapidly. So I want to label this element with a full superpower. And for that, we'll need to amend our custom hooks API a little bit. We now want to return an object that has the typed superpower, that's the partially typed superpower we've been creating all along, but also the selected superpower, the one we're currently on. Let's actually return both of those. Type superpower is the same, selected superpower is the one on the selected index. And then on the component which uses this hook, can destructure the value to re-render as before, but also the full currently selected superpower to use as the ARIA label. Sweet. This opens us up to do some further tweaks. Cursors usually don't blink as you type, some disappear as you delete. So if we wanted to simulate that, we could also return our current phase from our hook. Take it out. And now I want to bring in the class names helper library here. It's handy for conditionally applying CSS classes. So let's use our new CN method, to apply our class for the color, but pass an object to only apply the blinking cursor class when... Oh, we haven't exported the phase in them. Let's rename it to type phase and export it. So if we're not in the deleting phase, have a blinking cursor and we can see no cursors we delete. How about always showing the cursor while we're typing? Well, we'd need to break our one class into two. Let's duplicate this and say we've now got the end cursor class. And when we've got both the end cursor and blinking classes, we've got the blink animation. So we can now say, if we're in the posing phase, blink. Indeed, we're only blinking while we're posing and not showing a cursor while we're deleting. Does this look better? Who knows? We may tweak this forever. Let me know what you think, as I was pretty much making it up as we went along. What would you improve? Is where I've put the classes a bit nuts? Did I really mean for the default case to be doing the same thing as the posing phase? Common tweaks that do come to me are shuffling this array so visitors see the superpowers in a different order whenever they visit, or at least on every loop. Playing with the timings is fun, and we could maybe make the typing feel more human by randomizing them. For example, picking an integer between 80 and 160 for the typing interval. I think most interesting would be getting the array from a spreadsheet or a table in Notion. That way, the client will be able to change them and their order at will without needing us to change code. And that's guaranteed to happen. The client will want to change this. If Eric doesn't, then I'm buying anyone who comments, I don't know, tell when you eye subscriptions. Tesla, doesn't matter, I'm never losing this bet. Clients always change their minds. They're only human. So yeah, I'm thinking Notion integration as the next video in this series, but do let me know if you've got other ideas. What would you like to learn? We'll be back next week. Leave a like to possibly help the channel, subscribe to maybe get the next video in your feed, and for sure, thanks a bunch for watching. I'll see you around.